What is going on? Welcome back to another video. Last week, I made the joke of us doing Get the Let Out Fridays, and guess what? You guys wanted to do it, so I'm like, <laughs> an excuse to make more Led Zeppelin videos. You good, bro? So here we are at Get the Let Out Fridays. We're gonna try this for a little bit, and today we're talking about, in my opinion, what is an overlooked Led Zeppelin masterpiece. We're of course talking about 10 years gone. Every time I play this in a video, there are just tons of comments that come in, and they're just like, what song is that? What is that, what's that riff from? I'm like, oh man, it's 10 years gone. It, it, in my opinion, it's my favorite Led Zeppelin song. I think it's their best song. And uh, there's a lot of really fascinating things about it that I researched and dove into, and I'm gonna tell you all about them. And Jimmy Page did a perfect job of describing a song like this, which he calls The Whisper and the Thunder. <laughs> So I guess we should start off by saying that I'm playing the wrong guitar for this song. I know that Jimmy is very associated with a Les Paul, and I think that's because, you know, most of the pictures of Jimmy are live, and he played a Les Paul live, but in the studio, he was rocking a lot of tellies, a lot more single coil sounds, and he actually plays this song on, where's it at? <laughs> I'm like, where's my telecaster at? On a telly. Now, I don't have a telly or anything like his. He had a 53 brown telly that had a B bender in it. If you hear him play it live, which they didn't play much, which I'll talk about here in a minute as well, um, you know, he uses the B bender a lot in it. But uh, if you listen, the whole song is pretty much all telly. And I thought that was a really interesting thing because there's always this huge debate like, what did Paige use? Is it Les Paul? Is it telly? Is it Dan Electro? Is it Rick Bach? You know, all these different, different things. He had a strat at one point. So I'm using the wrong guitar, but I felt like playing a Les Paul today, so I'm playing Les Paul. <laughs> Now the next thing that was really cool was that this song was never intended to be, you know, with, with vocals. It was essentially an instrumental song that Paige was writing. Um, it, and if you listen to it, it kind of makes a lot of sense because there is a lot of guitar solos. There's not any of the like shredding Paige solos. Um, they're all very melodic, but there's just a lot. It's, it's super, super heavy guitar driven, maybe even more so than other songs. So it makes sense that this was supposed to be an instrumental song. But um, Robert Plant actually wrote some lyrics, 10 years gone, about his old girlfriend from 10 years ago that made him decide, like, either you're going to, you know, choose me or music, and obviously we know the choice that, that Plant made. So he wrote a song, 10 years gone. Now, talking about the guitar parts, is it's really, really interesting, because one of the coolest things about, you know, Jimmy Page's style is it, he's so rippy, and... You know, this song has has riffs, has hooks, but it's very chordy. There's so many cool things. Like, look at the intro. You know, just... Ah, oh, it's so dark and just kind of like ominous sounding. And then he goes into this next section. I always thought he played it this, uh, you know, E-flat diminished 7 down here. He actually plays it up here. I, I watched one of the live videos, and I saw his hand shift. He went up here. And I, his, I'm like, whoa, 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 where, where are you going? What are you doing? And then he played it up here, and I'm like, oh, man, I've been playing it in the wrong spot this whole time. He goes to a normal E minor. More, more strumming now. Then he goes to this major 7. Down to another major 7. So just really fascinating chords. Like, listen to them together. It's so good. And then, of course... Then here comes that hook, that tail. Which I think that this is one of the most powerful riffs in the entire Zeppelin catalog. I mean, it is just, I never get tired of hearing it every single time. I remember the first time I heard it, it, it actually the song, I remember it gave me goosebumps. Just like, it was just so dark and powerful sounding. And um, I still, when I hear it, I'm just like, that, that is just one of the best riffs ever. And like I said, I think it gets overlooked, you know, it gets overshadowed by Whole Lot of Love and, you know, Heartbreaker and, and maybe some of these other, you know, really big songs of Zeppelin's, uh, but this one, oh, it's so good. Now the next part that really got my attention is behind the first solo. Now I don't know any of the solos uh, in this song. I've only ever learned the rhythm parts. But behind the solo, he, he transitions from that into this, which is a really, really interesting just chord progression. I love the way it sounds. You know, I mean, like, what a cool little thing. He goes from the D major 7 
to a C major to a G major. And I just, I love that transition that he does right there. And then, and eventually it's all drop B. Now, Led Zeppelin only played this song a couple of times live. This was, a, a, you know, they said one of their hardest songs to play live, but whenever they had a, a little break, they came back and they were like, let's play some of these songs that we, you know, were just essentially album songs. We've never played them live. And this was one of them. And, and if you listen to it, um, I read that there's 14 guitar tracks on this, like stacked guitar tracks at one point. So it's like, how do you recreate all these different guitar parts that are happening? And um, not that they could recreate 14 of them, but when I was watching the live video, I'm like, it's... Is John Paul Jones sitting down? I thought it was kind of strange. He's playing a three-neck guitar. So he had this three-neck guitar that he got. It had a six-string, 12-string, and then a mandolin on it. And uh, he was sitting. And I'm like, well, not that it wouldn't be heavy, but I'm like, that couldn't be heavier than the double neck that, that, that Paige plays standing. And then I was listening, and I'm like, well, there's still, I was, I was coming up, there's still bass going on. And he's playing acoustic. He's just playing the rhythm guitar while Paige is playing the other rip. <laughs> I'm like, what am I hearing? Well, turns out he had a bass pedal. So he was playing bass with his feet, guitar at the same time. I mean, I think John Paul Jones has to be, you know, this is an overlooked song. He gets overlooked so much in Led Zeppelin. I mean, like he was really just, just the glue that, that held it all together. He was, you know, so crucial to that Led Zeppelin formula. And this just proves like he was just a great musician. <laughs> Now what I wanted to end with is what I, is just, oh my god, it has to be one of Paige's best melodies ever. It's on the outro, there, it, it hits it a little bit sooner too, but basically, like the third time this riff comes in, you hear this solo come in over top of it, basically like a lead melody. that you can hear the harmonies are just stacked on top of each other for that part um it's, it's one of my favorite parts every time i hear the song that riff will get stuck in my head it's, it, between this one that one or that solo riff will get stuck in my head every single time it's one of those songs i've just slowly been piecing together learning like i said i can't play any of it perfect it's just it's just fun to nerd out about this stuff because it's so fascinating you know all the things that that Led Zeppelin did in these songs and just they were ahead of their time and I don't know. There's a lot of cool stuff going on back then. So anyways, that's going to be in the end of this nerd session on 10 Years Gone. I might do more of these, kind of about one specific song and kind of research them. But uh, other than that, I'm going to bounce on out of here, guys. I hope you all have a rock and roll kind of day. Get the let out, and I'll see you later. Whoop, whoop.